these are the things when we come upon them, we will come to the understanding that the earth is the Lord. There is no sector of economy, there is no part of life on earth that God has not ordained that believers should have believed. When you have the blessings of God, causes cannot do harm to you. The things that our politics do cannot have effect on you. They will wonder what is happening to this fellow. Is he a human being? He is a human being, but not an ordinary human being. You are not an ordinary human being when you have the power of God. There is no place you are that the hand of God cannot reach you. But one thing is sure, the word of God, when spoken, nothing can stop it. Now we are continuing with this message titled Tackling Lifetime Necessities. Tackling Lifetime Necessities, we take part three to there. And our text, as was read, is drawn from Luke 2 25 to 35. You will remember that last week we concentrated on economic and finance related lifetime necessities. Today, we want to concentrate on spiritual and ministry-related lifetime necessities. There are core spiritual goals we come upon in life and pursue. Sometimes, they relate to our spiritual lives. There may be something you find unwholesome, something you don't enjoy, something that drags you back in your spiritual life. You want it taken away. If in the first one year, the first five years, the first 10 years, they are still there. It does not mean they are not going to go. If you want to continue to pursue, it becomes a lifetime necessity. It becomes something you are fighting to achieve as you leave and you would want it taken away you would want an improvement on that side while still on this part of the divide but that is one part there are promises of God that we come upon in life given to us individually either through words from God or through prophecy or through dreams or true visions, or true perceptions, they come into your life at some point. You commence pursuit of it. At a time, it becomes something so heavy on you. Two years, five years, 10 years, 15 years down the line, it has not still come to pass. If you are serious about it, if you believe in it strongly, it becomes a lifetime necessity. It becomes what takes a large chunk of your time, your focus, your concentration, your prayers, your struggles, your expectations, your hopes, and everything that concerns you. Sometimes it may have to do with a vision, God-given. Something you find needs to be achieved. And you know you've been called into it. You've been spoken to about doing it. It has become your assignment. If it came from God, it surely will come to pass. Pursuit of it is your own job. Some other times it may be words you have read, words you have heard things you have found in the scriptures and you come to believe that this is possible, this can come to pass and you go beyond believing that it is possible and it can come to pass to believing that it will come to pass in your time. It will come to pass perhaps through you. You get into the pursuit and several years pass. It has not still come to pass. It becomes a lifetime pursuit and our concentration is those things that you pursue for life that the Lord will help you obtain them experience them come upon them while you are still alive praise the Lord we have in this scripture passage a man called Simeon not too much is written about him the passage tells us that he was 
waiting for the consolation of Israel. He was waiting for the hope of Israel. He was waiting for the promise of the Messiah. Israelis believed in this. Those who taught them would teach them about it. The set of things that were to happen. Things will get worse sometimes, either in captivity or under threat. They will remember the promise of the Messiah. They will remember to think that if the Messiah had been around, if something good as a result of his coming were to occur, we wouldn't be in this kind of situation. But this man, called Simeon, did not only come to know it, he did not only come to understand it, but he believed strongly in it. He believed it was really, really possible. It isn't just what we find in the Bible, but it was going to come to pass. And in the process, he came to believe that it was going to come soon. That in his lifetime, this promise must come to pass. Praise the Lord. Now, when you hear in the scriptures that somebody was waiting for something or waiting on God, there are three things that are key to it. There are three key things, all starting with F, three Fs that we can use to launch into what it means. The first one is faith. The second one is focus. The third one is fasting and prayers. Once you hear that somebody was waiting, the first is faith. There is something he or she has come to believe about God beyond the ordinary, beyond those who pay lip service to it. There is something the person has come to not just believe God for, but got into trusting God that it will come in his lifetime. People that lived before Simeon read about the Messiah. They read about the hope of Israel. They read about the consolation of Israel. But himself came with such faith that it was going to happen in his own time. A second is focus. Someone had said to us many years back that a human being has a single focus, a single concentration, that you cannot really effectively concentrate on too many things at the same time. When a person is focusing on a thing, Maybe God's word, maybe his promise, maybe a dream he once had, maybe a revelation that came. It will mean that it will form part of his thought. He goes to bed with it. He wakes up with it. That is the subject of his studies. As others research into other things, that is his own subject of research. If he is speaking, there is no how he will finish speaking and he has not got touched on it in one way or the other. That becomes his teaching, that becomes his preaching, that becomes his discussion, that becomes his declaration, that becomes everything about him. He thinks on it. He focuses on it. He concentrates on it. He believes it. When others pursue other things, this is his pursuit. This is what he thinks on how it can come to pass. Yeah, he must have a family, I believe. He must have a wife, I believe. He must belong to a community. Contributions in the community were also being done by him. He paid attention to those things, but his chief focus was how can I see the Messiah? Come to Israel. If the Messiah appears, revival will break out. If Messiah appears, the coldness of our religion will be wiped away. If Messiah appears, the power of God will come. If the Messiah appears, a number of things will change. And the third one is fasting and prayers. Years, months, 
days, weeks of fasting and prayers had gone into this project. He prayed for finance. He prayed for the things his family needed. He prayed for going to school and the others. But the consolation of Israel took a large part of his reasons for prayers. Men who act this way may have a lot of needs, yet when they go before the Lord, they are talking about that spiritual pursuit as if these other things are non-existent. Whenever they find opportunities, they can touch heaven. They can have breakthrough into the realm of the supernatural. What they are carrying as their request is this matter that has to do with their spiritual focus. Two years, five years, ten years, fasting was still going on. And by experience I've known, when times pass, additions are made to hours of prayers, to days of fasting, in pursuit of of this same thing. I need to pause, brothers and sisters, to let you know, if a vision failed, it's not because God's word is not sure and steadfast. If a pursuit fails, it's not because God is unwilling to bring his word to pass, but it's because the person given to pursue stopped at a time. He went on and on and on and on until God by the Holy Spirit, Nan said to him, Brother, son of the Most High God, I give you this assurance that you will not die until you see what you are praying for. Whether there be war in Israel, if Israel is overrun, they are defeated, kings taken. Your life will remain until you see the Messiah. If there be outbreak of disease, epidemic, anyhow it comes, whatever it's doing, you will live until you see this promise come to pass. If you run into accident, no matter how severe, you will continue to be alive until you see this promise come to pass. And the same way he had believed with great strength that the Messiah was real and was going to come, he also believed that he was not going to die until he saw the Lord's Christ. I keep saying that faith is so important in our walk with God. Faith gets shaken from time to time. Faith suffers, it suffers squabbles of all kinds. It suffers all kinds of attack. But one thing is sure, as the word of God lives, despite attacks, faith also keeps living. Despite all kinds of attack. I can imagine him. If you tell him he will die tomorrow, he laughs to let you know, I am yet to see the Lord's Messiah. Until I see the Lord's Messiah, I am not dying. If you point a gun at him, he remembers. The Lord says, I will not die until I see the Lord's Messiah. If you carry a pocket of charms, bury it by his windows, put it under his bed. The Lord says, until I see the Messiah. I am not dying. Praise the Lord. But I will tell you one truth. Pursuit of manifestation of God's word. Pursuit of the promises of God. Are never something easy to do. When you look at the record of heroes of faith. In Hebrew 11. You will see, it was part of what was said there, that these men, by faith or through faith, obtained promises. It's not something simple. When a promise is made, 
there are key questions that runs in the mind of every reasonable person. The first one is, when is this going to happen? This relates to date and time. When is this going to be? Another question comes, where? Which place? Where is this going to happen? Is it happening here where I am? Is it going to happen elsewhere? Is there a place I need to go to to see this happen? Another will be how. How is this going to happen? What activities are there to bring this to pass? What will be the set of activities or events that will get this into being? And there is also one more. Who? Who are the personnel? Who are the tools? What human beings are there to be used to get these come to pass? For this man, the Messiah was going to be born at God's time. He wasn't given time. All the Lord said was, until you see the Messiah, you will not die. It was going to happen in Israel. It was going to happen in Jerusalem. It was going to happen in the temple. But when? Very difficult to come upon. What will be the activity? The Messiah will be brought to the temple one day. And once he is brought in there, I will get you see him. So that you can touch, you can do prayers, and then you can depart in peace. When and what time? Still a difficult one. Who are going to be the persons involved? You yourself will have a move to make. You will have to get there to see it. The mother, the father will have actions to take. They will bring him right into the temple and you are going to see. And when complicated mothers are around, we go back to where we started. If what I'm pursuing came by revelation, I will also go through revelation to know the time, to know the period, to know the season, to know the who, to know the why, to know everything that needs to be known. Revelations give interpretation to revelation. If they occur in the place of prayers, I need to return to the place of prayer. That is also how I can get to know how and when, where and how will this happen. If it came by vision, I will still tell the part of vision to get at how to get exactly to it. And the Bible says, this man had grown old. We are not told how young he was when he commenced his pursuit. And we are not told how old he became when it came to pass. But when you read in between the lines, you will agree with me that the man had nothing else doing on earth on the day he saw Jesus. Amen. If you look at his prayers, does this sound like the prayers of a man who has a business unfinished anywhere? Once he held the Lord, he said, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace. So it's as if the earth was no longer too much of a happy place for him. I need to live now, not tomorrow, not next month, not next year. I am set to live now. It will show you that perhaps his life may have been elongated. His life may have been overstretched. He may have been given extra time to live. Waiting to see the salvation of Israel, the consolation of Israel, the deliverance of Israel, the hope of Israel, the expectation of Israel. And by the time it was going to happen, we are told, remember, the passage says, he was told by the Spirit that he was not going to die until he saw the Lord's Christ. And at the time of fulfillment, if you read again carefully, you will see the passage says, he came to the temple by the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit. 
if it was vision, you will hear. He came based on a vision. If it was dreams, you will see. Another dream will have to herald. Another dream will have to activate. Another dream will have to give a nudge, a push, getting him to act. He came by the Holy Spirit at that right time, in that right place, to do that right thing he was supposed to do. And when he arrived, the Spirit of God also got him see. This is the Lord's Messiah. I believe it wasn't only Jesus that was in the temple for presentation that day. It wasn't only Jesus that was brought into that place at that time. But he was able to dictate. He was able to discover who it was. And once he came and carried. It's like you have a child. A man will just come an old man. He takes your child from you and you are looking at him wondering. He lifts the child <laughs> and says, Lord, now you can let your servant depart in peace. And then he spoke about the child. Mother and father were watching, wondering what's happening, what's going on here. And upon their marvel, upon their shock and surprise, he said to them, this child is not ordinary. He is going to be a light for the Gentiles as we have seen. Because the Gentile world lived in spiritual darkness. And we still have a bit of it now. A good chunk of it. And he will bring glory to Israel. And then he blessed them. And he was set to go be with the Lord. His lifetime pursuit. His lifetime necessity met at that point. Praise the Lord. Today we are talking about ourselves. What is it you are pursuing? What is the prophecy you got? What revelation is it you came upon? What word is it you have been given? What vision is it you are pursuing? Once a word comes, I hold firmly to it. I hold to it, run with it, push it. If it happened to Simeon, it can happen to me. It can happen to you. If it happened to Abraham, it can happen to me. It can happen to you. If it happened in their days, it can happen now. God does not change. He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. I am announcing to you that what you have pursued with every vigor, with every strength, shall come to pass in your lifetime. I've said in this church before that a vision God-given has its own life. If a person holds to it, the life of that vision, the life of that word, the life of that dream also gives life to the holder of it. It gives life to the one who who also leans on it so that if the word of God cannot be destroyed, the holder of it can also not be destroyed until he is detached from it. If the word of God cannot be stopped from coming to pass, the one who holds to it and runs to it also lives by that so that before you leave, that vision comes to pass. That vision comes to pass. If your village people like, let them gather together. Let them bring every man his charm. Every man his talisman. Every person what he owns. Every person what he can do. If there is a word you are holding to that must come to pass while you live, what they have will do no harm. Instead, they will suffer harm themselves. If a is gather together and they said you are to go. No, not when there is a word you are holding to. Not when there is a pursuit that is of God. As as long as that pursuit is there, you hold to it, you live by it until it comes to pass. You will live until God's word upon your head comes to pass. You will live upon your prayers of many years until your prayers of many years comes into physical answer and manifestation. You are going to be alive until what you have believed God for, what he gave confirmation that they are going to come to pass truly comes to pass. No no one can take your life away. Sicknesses may come. 
But no, they are not taking you. You can't go by them. Yeah, all kinds of trials may come. Simeon may have faced them. But the prayers of many years, the seed sown on spiritual things, kept him strong and alive until he saw the Lord's Messiah, until he saw the consolation of Israel, until he saw coming to pass of the salvation of Israel. And I say to you, you will see the hope you are praying for. You are going to see the expectation you you have. Your expectation shall not be cut off. Your expectation shall not be dashed. Your expectation shall not suffer any kind of disappointment because God is faithful. We hope this message has inspired you. Thank you for watching. To other for this message, please call 080 God bless you. Thank you.